Welcome to the C3 News Show, the Midnight Edition. My name is Eon and I will be your host tonight. This was the second day of being now here and nowhere during the RC3. Later in this show, we have a short interview lined up with a very special guest, so make sure to watch till the end. Would you like to know more about the RC3 world? Have you been everywhere already? Our roving reporter Einwickler collected some impressions and is now ready to take you on a journey through the RC3 world. Hopefully he will show you some spots you haven't found yet. Einwickler, take it away! Hey there, I just discovered the really cool Privacy Week world. It's basically a digital exhibition where you can learn and see many interesting things and read about the Privacy Week and its associates. They even have book recommendations and a merch shop. My personal highlights are the free cookie and the secret kitchen cat. In the upper level of the museum you can watch past presentations and discover even more. Why don't you visit them yourself? Did you knew that although this event is purely virtual, we still have the beloved infodesk? We took a look hey, behind hey. the scenes of the... Did you forget us? No, I did not forget you. Um, oh, welcome good. on stage. Hi. What would you like to share with us? We have a gig. We have a gig. We play live. Yeah, live tomorrow, 10 o'clock at the Seabase channel. That's day three. Cool, eh? That's really cool. So let me give you a little bit of context about the coffee bots. Seabase has not only quite a history as a space station, but since several years, some crew members are writing and producing theater plays. You might have heard of the play Ein Cybernachtstraum, and if you've been uh, to a Hamburg Congress, you might have even seen The Time is Right they performed on stage there. The coffee bots are the newest play of this crew. So when will you be on stage again? Tomorrow, day three, 10 o'clock. Sounds great. Uh, awesome. Have fun and um, see you there tomorrow at the Seabase Channel at 10 p.m. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye, Bye, -bye. Internet. Bye. Let's get back to the Infodesk. It exists even though this is a virtual congress and we have a behind the scenes perspective for you and also an interview. Let's go. Is an Eddie. Is it or as an Eddie or is an Eddie? What is However it? However you like. There is no okay. correct and no wrong pronunciation. Wow, but at least I found you, man. That's the info desk. That's the place I need to be. You know, I'm I'm from the new show, as you know, and I need information. I'm actually wondering how do you do this, guys? How many people are there behind you in this organization? Uh, currently, we are um, about eight um, Infodesk angels, and there's uh, about half a dozen Infodesk coordinators. Whoa, that's already a bunch. Is that normal? In a normal Congress, the same amount? In the normal Congress, uh, we have got lots more. Um, don't know why the number is quite low. It's not too low, but uh, angels are still invited to join us. Yeah, yeah. And, and But is this different from the last year, RC3, or no? Um, we, we had a couple more. I do not recall whether we had so many at the beginning of the event, but yeah. at least at the end. How do you get your well, information? Well, at the one hand, we do monitor a multitude of sources like the social media. We monitor Twitter and uh, and Mastodon. We are around at IRC. But on the other hand, we are also involved in the event orga before the event even starts. Uh, yeah. We are present at the preparation meetings, at the um, build-up of the physical event, but also at the build-up of the um, uh, virtual event like this time. And um, yeah, we, we're networking into all the parts of the chaos family in order to find out as much as possible, as early as possible. What, do, what are the weirdest questions? What are the most frequently asked questions? Do you have an overview? Does that shift? Does that change? Yeah, it, it does change at the early stage of an event. Uh, uh, like at the RC3, the, the most top, uh, top one most asked question today was how do I join the world? Where can I redeem my ticket? Uh, that ended um, when yeah. the world actually was uh, booted up. Um, we had other questions like what are the sizes of the merch? Uh, how uh, large do I need to order my t-shirt? Yeah. How can I join this or that stream? Where do I find this or that assembly in the world? Just like in the physical event as well. Okay, yeah. And you're easy to find, of course, as I remember. Huh? Uh, the first yeah, thing we go to. 
we've got quite a prominent spot uh, directly next to the entry point of the map. As with the physical events, we are located as a, at a central location as well. Okay, so can you send me? Can you show me the way to the next whiskey bar? No, the next whiskey bar no. in a. Uh, in a virtual event, event would be quite yeah. uh, quite difficult. I could send you to the Scottish or Irish embassy there. Um, okay, then that, I need that, another bar, um, a chunk bar. Is that available as well? A the chunk nearest bar. chunk bar. The nearest the nearest chunk bar is of course always at the actual info desk <laughs> during the night shifts. <laughs> That's where I want to be. <laughs> I will see you there. Thank you, Isenetti, for uh, Isenetti, Asenetti, whatever. The info desk is there, and that's for me one of the most important tools to use. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Let's talk about tomorrow's Fahrplan. Again, like yesterday, I picked some talks that look really interesting to me personally. Both talks are in German, so I will announce them in German too. The first Vortrag is from Anke Domscheidberg. Sie war in der 19. Legislaturperiode Abgeordnete im Deutschen Bundestag und war Mitglied im Ausschuss für digitale Agenda. In dieser Zeit saß ich als Mitarbeiter von erst Jimmy Schulz, später Mario Brandenburg in der zweiten Reihe und ich kann euch deswegen bezeugen, Anke hat wie keine andere die Behördenvertreter und Bundesminister im Ausschuss wirklich zum Schwitzen gebracht. Wie Anke das alles erlebt hat, erzählt sie euch in ihrem Vortrag Inside Bundestag, Einblicke in, in das netzpolitische Nähkästchen einer Abgeordneten. Das tut sie morgen an Tag 3 um 8 Uhr, also 20 Uhr, im Studio Chaoszone. Über den Koalitionsvertrag habe ich mich sehr gefreut, weil dort aus meiner Sicht richtig viele der politischen Forderungen, die im CCC und im Dunstkreis davon in den letzten 15 Jahren entstanden sind, jetzt enthalten sind. Einen eher analytischen Blick auf diesen Text wirft Coach Freezer im Vortrag Koalitionsvertragsanalyse. Mit Tools und Methoden dem Ampelvertrag auf den Zahn fühlen. Tag 3 um 13 Uhr im Studio R3S Monheim Rhein. I promised a guest appearance and now it's time. Our guest traveled in a long and arduous journey that took several milliseconds over the data superhighways of cyberspace to appear right here in this studio. So please give a warm hand of applause for one of the CCC spokespersons, Linus Neumann. Welcome, nice to have you. Hi, thanks for having me. What is your message for the RC3 crowd? You're doing a great job. I still hope we'll meet again in person next year or the year after that. And if you're not vaccinated yet, please get vaccinated. What changed for you if you compare this year's of an RCO3 experience to last year's experience? For me, the biggest change was that the studios run their own content curation. So they have their individual CFPs, invited some speakers, uh, made the choice uh, which ones to accept, which ones to reject. So all this content teamwork that for a Congress starts in September, is like two, three months of hard work, uh, was not necessary for me this year. So this resulted in a far less stressful uh, preparation time and uh, you know way more time to enjoy uh, RC3. The crowd came up with awesome ideas to make the Congress a virtual experience. Which ideas or concepts, pieces of code or software would you like to see integrated in the next physical Congress? Well, new challenges breed new solutions and new creative potential that was released for RC3, absolutely. Um, and I'm curious which of these ideas will be transferable to a real life Congress, right? We had a couple of ideas that we wanted to transfer from real life Congress to RC3. Um, many worked, others didn't, and some things actually changed. And I think the same will be true with the new ideas from RC3 when we begin to transfer them to a real life Congress. And it's hard to predict which ones uh, you know, will work and which ones won't. What part of RC3 did you enjoy the most? Well, it's always hard to pick like a single talk and, and recommend it. A couple of my highlights have already been aired, so I've already seen them. And I should note that I am not like the kind of guy that, you know, has a conference plan and, you know, sees, okay, what am I going to watch now? What am I going to watch now? I'm more or less like a consumer. I just let it play. And, you know, sometimes I uh, switch to a talk that I didn't expect to be particularly interesting. And I'm absolutely 
um, fascinated by it. So I'm more like a zapper guy, you know, I don't have a TV. So this is the one time in my in my life that I can sit at home and switch channels and uh, go, go zapping. So I, that, that is uh, what I do. Which talk or workshop are you looking forward to participate in? So I had a small role in a talk together with uh, the Zerforschung Collective about vulnerability disclosure, but this was really like a very small uh, appearance that I had there. And I'll do a soldering workshop tomorrow with my neighbors. We'll repair uh, amateur and ham radios and uh, watch the RCC RC3 <laughs> streams. Wow. And what did you personally do to make this RC3 a worthwhile experience for yourself? So the one thing I can never do at a Congress is take part in workshops um, and actually solder something, do some tinkering. So this is what I'm looking forward to, uh, that we can now sit at home, you know, have the soldering station and everything ready and some, maybe some software projects to hack on and, you know, drink some mate and some tea or whatever, and just have a, a, a way more relaxed, uh, afternoon with uh, actually getting some soldering, tinkering and some making done, maybe. See you soon. Yeah, thank you for having me and uh, have fun. I hope you used the opportunity and went shopping this afternoon. Every day we tweet a shopping list for the cocktail of the day so you can prepare. Today's cocktail of the day is brought to you by Lucas. Ingredients, sugar, old vanilla beans, and orange, cream, cheap vodka, good vodka, coffee grinds. The two wheels, a box with lid, some jars, a peeler, a shaker and an empty bottle. Put some sugar, add the vanilla and close the lid. After some weeks, you'll have vanilla sugar. Fill the coffee grinds with cheap vodka into the empty bottle. Add vanilla and normal sugar. Add a slice of orange peel. After some weeks, filter the syrup. Add vodka, coffee syrup and cream into the glass and shake it with ice. Ready to serve the all recycled dudes white Russian. Some of you might find that they do not have all components for this cocktail at home. In this case I recommend to follow our Twitter account, this one. And check out tomorrow's shopping list. Before you leave this stream, I would like to remind you to please take your trash and your bottles and those of your neighbors with you on your way out. You will find a bottle drop point right next to the door. What's different this year is that it is marked with an invisible sign and most of the time there won't even be a crate. Please use this QR code to organize the emptying of your bottle drop off point as you're used to from Leipzig or Hamburg. This was it for today. Thanks for watching and do check out the RC3 world. It is most busy during the nights. I wish you safe travels and Godspeed on the data superhighways to and from our virtual event space and the cyberspace in general. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.